Good day everyone. In this video, we will have a continuation topic of integration. And in this topic, we will be dealing with the integration of exponential and logarithmic functions and also the integration of trigonometric functions. Now let's start with the theorem. We have here four theorems to consider which yield on the exponential and logarithmic functions. The first theorem states that the integration of e to the x dx is just equal to e to the x plus c. And for the second one, the integration of a to the x dx is equal to a to the x all over ln a plus c. In here, a should be greater than 0 with a should not be equal to 1. And for the third theorem, we have it there. The integration of x raised to the power of negative 1 dx is just equal to the integration of 1 over x dx. The, the answer there is equal to ln x plus c. And for the fourth one, in integrating du over u, it's equal to ln u plus c. You need to familiarize these four theorems here because it is very useful as we yield or as we exposed to exponential and logarithmic functions. This time, let's proceed with illustrative examples. I have here four examples. We are going to find the integrals of the following functions. We have four here, A, B, C, and D. Now let's start solving as we start with letter A. For our solution, we will use the theorem to determine the integrals. For letter A, we will be using the first and second theorem. Then we have here below, as this stated here, the given, the integration of the quantity e to the x plus 2 to the x quantity dx, it's, which is just equal to uh, integrating each term. Remember, uh, we apply there the basic integration that's equal to the integration of e to the x dx plus the integration of 2 to the x dx. And now we apply there the new theorems we had. Integration of e to the x dx is just equal to e to the x. And remember, this is an a. Our 2 there is a. So we apply there a to the x all over ln a. And that's 2 to the x over ln a, which is ln 2 plus c. And that's our answer for the first example. For the second example, we will be using the second theorem alone. And that's very easy. That's the integration of 3 to the x dx for our given. It's just equal to 3 to the x over ln 3 plus c. And that's the answer for the second example. How about the third example? We will be using the second theorem again. We have it here, the integration of 3 to the x plus 1 dx as our given. Uh, as you recall, the, the theorems or the, expon the loss of exponent, uh, remember that 3 raised to the power of x plus 1 is just equal to 3 to the x times 3 raised to the power of 1 dx. And therefore, we are ready to apply our theorem. We have a constant 3 here. So we place the 3 outside the integral symbol. And that's 3 times the integration of 3 to the x dx. And it's equal to 3 times 3 to the x over ln 3 plus c. 
And that is the answer for the third example. And for the fourth example, we will be using the third theorem. We get the integration of 2 over x dx is just equal to, remember, 2 here is a constant, so we should place it outside the integral symbol. The integral symbol, that's 2 times the integration of 1 over x dx, and that's equal to 2 ln x plus c. And this is our answer for the fourth example. That's how simple it is. As long as you can familiarize and master the, the theorems. And at the same time, the basic concepts in manipulating functions. Let's proceed with the, the theorems of trigonometric functions. The theorems of integrating trigonometric functions. We have here six trigonometric functions to consider. Remember that uh, differentiation is the inverse of anti-differentiation, uh, right? Therefore, you can see a familiar, familiar uh, theorems here. Uh, for the integration of sine x dx, that's just simply equal to the negative cosine x plus c. If you're going to recall our topic in differentiation, you can really say that yes, it is just the inverse of the differentiation rule of trigonometric functions. Same goes with letter B, C, D, E, and F. For letter B, the integration of cosine x is equal to sine x plus c. And for the integration of the second squared x dx, that's equal to tangent x plus c. And for the integration of cosecant squared x dx, it's just equal to the negative cotangent x plus c. And for the integration of the second x tangent x dx, that's equal to second x plus c. And lastly, for the integration of cosecant x cotangent x dx, that's equal to the negative of cosecant x plus c. Please familiarize again these six examples we have for the integration or integrating trigonometric functions. Now let's proceed with illustrative examples. I have here four examples to answer. We are going to determine the antiderivatives of the following. Let's start with letter A. And for our solution, we will use the theorem on antiderivatives of trigonometric functions. The 6 presented there earlier will be our theorems to be used. For the first example, using the first and the second theorem, we have as the given the integration of quantity cosas quantity cosine x minus sine x quantity dx. Remember the basic rule that we can integrate each term. And that's equal to the integration of cosine x dx minus the integration of sine x dx. And that's equal to sine x for the integration of cosine x. That's sine x. Copy the sine, negative, and the integration of sine x dx is the negative cosine x plus c. And we simplify there. Remember, negative and negative will turn to posit positive. And for our final answer, that's sine x plus cosine x plus c. How about the second example? Since we know that cotangent cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared minus 1, you are going to familiarize this. Uh, remember, these are the identities of trigonometric, of trigonometry. We have identities to recall. So that's the identity. This identity will be applied in our second example. Remember that cotangent squared x dx 
the integration of cotangent squared x dx is our given. And we apply down the identity. We are going to rewrite that as the quantity of cosecant squared x minus 1 quantity dx. And since we already, uh, we can now separate it by integrating each, each term. And it's equal to the integration of cosecant squared x minus the integration of dx. And that's equal to, remember that in our theorem there, for trigonometric functions, the integration of cosecant squared x is equal to the negative cotangent. And the integration of dx is x. We copy this sign. Therefore, for our final answer, it's negative cotangent squared minus x plus c. For the third example, you're going to recall the identity of tangent squared v, which is equal to second squared v minus 1. Okay, this is another identity to be recalled in trigonometry. And for our given, that's the integration of tangent squared v dv. And then we apply the identity for this one so we can solve it in a simpler way. Therefore, it's equal to the integration of the quantity second squared v minus 1 quantity dv. And we integrate each term. That's the integration of second squared v dv minus the integration of dv. We first find the integration of this, which is equal to tangent v. And the integration of this one is v. Therefore, for our final answer, we get tangent v minus v plus c. That's for the third example. For the fourth example, this is how simple it is. You need to take note that we can separate the, the fraction sine x over cosine squared x into like this. Why? Because we need to look for a function that has an integration from the theorem we had. Remember that we cannot apply our theorem here immediately for there is no uh, quotient rule also. So we are going to find its identity. And that's equal to this. We can separate it by the integration of sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x dx. So we can now apply the identity that sine x over sine x is just equal to tangent x and 1 over cosine x is just equal to second x. And now we are ready to solve for its answer, which is very easy. We got the second x plus c. Remember that in our theorem, it was interchanged second x and tangent x. That's equal. That's only equal because the multiplication is commutative. And for our answer, that's the second x plus c. And that's for the trigonometric functions. Now, let's proceed to practice exercise. It's your turn to solve the following. I'm going to present examples for you. You can pause for a moment and solve it on your own. And you can also check it on your own by applying the, the inverse of uh, integration, which is differentiation, if you still have time. Here is the first example. You can po pause for a moment and answer this one. We have another six examples for the exponential and logarithmic functions. You can pause for a moment and answer the following. And lastly, we have five examples for trigonometric functions. You can pause for a moment and answer the following. And I hope you can solve for the correct answer. You can double check it by using any uh, online calculator or online application to solve the following integrals. Thank you so much, guys. And that's all for this video.